In 2018, Telford turned 50 at the same time as I did. The new town has come a very long way since 1968. So to celebrate, here's a Telford ABC. 26 things of interest to find in and around Telford, all beginning with a different letter of the alphabet. So let's start with part one, A to M. I hope you enjoy the film. So let's begin the Telford ABC with A for Apley Castle. Apley Castle, found just off Whitchurch Drive, behind the Princess Royal Hospital, gets its name from a fortified manor house, which, during the time of the English Civil War, was owned by the Charlton family. During this time it was successfully sacked by parliamentary forces, and the lead from the roof taken for Shrewsbury Castle. In 1791 a new manor house was built for the family, and the old one was used as a stable block, but this was demolished in 1955. It's a pleasant walk through Apley Woods, and if you look carefully, you can see the remains of where the second Apley Castle stood, as well as some of the ornamental features of its garden. Some of the stonework taken from the building can now be found at Hodnett Hall. In the area accessible to the public, you'll find a dovecot which allowed pigeon meat to be available to the household all year round, and just down for that, an ice house which is the precursor to the modern day fridge. It's a pleasant place to spend a few hours walking and wondering what it must have been like to live here back in the 1800s. B is for Bedlam Furnaces, found on the road just east out of Ironbridge. The Ironbridge area is world famous for the part it played in the Industrial Revolution and the Bedlam Furnaces are therefore of international significance. Formerly on Historic England's Heritage at Risk Register, a canopy has been built over them to give some protection from the elements. It's believed that these furnaces, built by the Maidley Wood Company in 1756, were some of the first ever built to smelt iron using coke, much of which may well have been used in the construction of the iron bridge itself. Bedlam perhaps comes from the nickname of the Bethlehem Royal Hospital in London, a notorious lunatic asylum. The Bedlam Furnaces, with its blackened workers running around on smoking piles of coke as flames belched out of the furnaces, must, at the time, have been a true vision of madness and chaos, if not the image of hell itself. C is for Clock Tower. He may have driven round and passed this clock many a time, but do you know its history? The road follows the line of the old railway, and the roundabout is almost directly on the site of the old station, where Station Road gets its name from. C and W Walker, famous for its gasometers, had a massive ironworks here with its own rail connections. The factory was closed in the 1970s and was later demolished, but the factory clock was saved. Pause for a moment to think of how many workers must have watched or listened to this clock to know when their working day would be over and they could return home. I have no idea though if its siren was ever saved. D is for drain spotting. Next time you're out, have a look at those utilitarian drain lids and grates doing unsung but sterling service on the street beneath your feet. Each one tells a story, and many, like this one, are dated. At one time, the Telford area was literally ablaze with iron foundries, making all kinds of iron goods. S. Corbett & Son, famous the world over for its agricultural implements, occupied a site between Park Street and the Crescent in Wellington. They manufactured a huge range of items, including vertical engines and boilers, as well as the wonderfully named Cambridge Pattern Clod Crusher and the Horse Hoe or Turnip Scuffle. They also made tomb railings and ironwork for drains. These can still be found throughout Telford, with an especially good crop of them all the way down Sutherland Avenue and Roslyn Road in Wellington. Other local manufacturers included J.C. Hulse, who had a foundry on the site where the Langley Field brickworks used to be. 
This example can be found on the Iron Bridge itself. The tradition continues with St Gabain Pam in Ketley, who bought out Stanton and Staverley Limited in 1985. The history of St Gabain Pam and how it got its name is also fascinating. Sadly, the UK doesn't produce the beautiful examples you can find in Japan, but it's worth looking between your feet as you wander around, as you might find a real piece of history. E is for ever ready. On Hinksay Road leading into Town Park, there used to be a stone wall with some faded blue iron gates in it, with dead ground behind. This used to be the site of an ever-ready battery factory that opened in 1956. Originally, they specialised in making dry cell batteries, such as the B103 and the B136 types. These were for the hugely successful Saucepan Special Radio a name which referred to its aluminium case that was manufactured by the London Aluminium Saucepan Company and was made from a 10-inch saucepan pressing to keep costs down. From 1949, the radio was sold in huge numbers, almost at cost to Africans in Rhodesia, with EverReady making its profit from the batteries required to power the set's valve electronics. In the 1970s, EverReady began its slow decline partly due to the fact it failed to see the future of alkali batteries over zinc carbon ones. Once a major employer locally, and especially of women, the site was demolished in 1995, and now it's being used for new housing. F is for Jerry Foxhall. I can think of no local artist who deserves more recognition for his work than Jerry Foxall. His sculptures are made of scrap metal, much of it coming from the dismantled Iron Bridge A power station. They're brilliantly observed, full of humour and capture the essence of the moment really well. One of my favourites is on the Granville roundabout, but there are others such as the one on Kemberton Road in Maidley and those in Brosley that were recovered from the Iron Bridge B station when it closed. I think his work is iconic and it speaks so clearly of a time when the Telford area was full of small mines serviced by stocky and faithful pit ponies. You've probably passed his work many a time, but it's really worth stopping to have a closer look. They definitely won't fail to bring a smile to your face. G is for Giotto. Sad and all forgotten just off Wellington Road in Muxton is a piece of public art by Bud Mosaics. Once at the entrance to an underpass, which has now been filled in, it sits in a fenced off and unused piece of land slowly falling apart. In 1986, Halley's Comet passed by the Sun on its 76 year cycle. Giotto, a satellite named after the Renaissance painter, was sent to intercept the comet and proved that it was indeed a kind of dirty snowball. I have tried to save this interesting piece of art on a number of occasions, but until now, with no success. Perhaps you should go and see it before it falls apart completely and is lost forever. Here's what it looked like when it was first installed. H is for William Bunty Hall. Hidden away behind St Gabain and what used to be the Sinclair Ironworks is Parker's Pool, possibly named after Parker's Liso, a field that was in the same location. Ketley Dingle, before the building of the motorway, was a playground for all of Ketley's children and Parker's Pool was no exception. Now it's a peaceful place to go for a walk or spend an afternoon fishing, but back in the summer of 1933 it was the site of a terrible tragedy. It was a hot day and people gathered around the pool and best friends Jim Moore and Bunty Hall challenged each other to swim the width of the pool. Jim made it, but even after helping his friend, Bunty drowned. A young man of only 21 with his whole life ahead of him. I hope that those who fish there now spare a thought for poor Bunty Hall and his untimely death in the dark waters of Parker's Pool.
I is for Isaiah's Stone. Tucked away in Town Park is a rock that's easily missed, but it has a fascinating history to it. It's named after Isaiah Jones, Deputy Chairman of the Telford Development Corporation, and a man who gave freely of his time to the local community. Isaiah owned a number of pits in the rock area, and as a boy, a stone on Lawley Common had always interested him, especially the question of how it got there, as it was not made of the same rock as local stone. It was later shown to have been brought here by glaciation 15,000 years ago. So it's travelled from Stodonia to Lawley Common, and now it can be found in Town Park, perhaps its final resting place. J is for Jigger's Bank. Possibly getting its name from an inclined roadway, this is the route that coal and limestone, as well as iron, would have been taken to feed the furnaces at Colbrook Dale. It's a steep road and there must have been many a runaway vehicle. It's believed that a jig was a device used to act as brakes on these vehicles and was operated by a jigger. At the bottom was a gatehouse where a toll would have been paid when the route was used. As far as I can see, this was demolished to make way for the railway and its overbridge, even though there is a house there with Derby Toll House written on it. K is for Ketley Sands Tunnel. On the old road, just between Ketley Brook Roundabout and the Horseshoes Inn, is what looks like a road bridge. This, in fact, is a tunnel that was probably used to transport sand from the sand quarries to the Sinclair Ironworks. For a while, the tunnel was actually lived in by a man called Coddy Walker and his wife, and they even shared the space with their donkey. It's interesting to note that the route of the current road was an improvement done by Thomas Telford to straighten and level this short section. L is for locks. Thomas Telford was a prolific engineer designing everything from road bridges to churches, but he also did a great deal of work on canals. Here at Hadley Park, on the trench branch of the Shropshire Union Canal, is a rather unusual guillotine lock that he designed. Built in around 1796, rather than having swinging gates, it has a lock gate that was lifted out of the water with a winch mechanism and was big enough to take four tugboats at a time. There's a similar example a bit further south at the wonderfully named Turnip Block. Old black and white photographs show a huge bulk of timber hoisted into the air. This isn't the lock gate, but in fact a counterweight that was used when lifting the lock gate. Both locks are Grade 2 listed structures, but sadly they're falling into disrepair. And if no action is taken to save them, it will be another bit of Telford history that will be sadly lost. M is for Memorial Bridge. Downstream from the famous Iron Bridge is the asymmetric cable stayed Jackfield Bridge, described by the Fine Arts Commission as worthy of the Iron Bridge Gorge. But this was not the first bridge on this site. It was constructed to replace the Haynes Memorial, or Free Bridge as it was commonly known, as there was no toll levied to cross it. This bridge, named after a Mr R Haynes who provided £600 to help pay for its construction back in 1909, was revolutionary at the time, being made of steel reinforced concrete. A remaining section of it can be found at the entrance to Colford, which clearly shows the concrete construction method. After years of repair work it was found to be unsafe, and in 1986 it was closed to traffic. Even though it was a Grade 2 listed structure, it was finally demolished and replaced by the current bridge, which opened in 1994, after eight years of waiting and frustration for motorists, with the temporary Bailey Bridge unable to take HGV traffic. It's interesting to note that the plaque on the remaining section of the original bridge is entitled Shropshire County Council, 
showing it predated the creation of Telford and Rekin Unitary Authority. I do hope you enjoyed this first part of the Telford ABC and learnt something new about the new town. I had great fun making it and it was more a case of deciding what to leave out than to include. Anyway, I hope you'll join me in the second film, N to Z, and I look forward to seeing you then.